some architecture where you can get smart fast with interviews with leading technology executives. I'm Ari Paparo. I'm joined today by German Hunt from MIQ, formerly known as Media IQ. German, thanks for being with us. Yeah, thanks for the invite. Looking forward to it. So, you know, I've known you for a very long time, known Media IQ, MIQ for a very long time. Um, it's fair to call it an agency, but it's not really an agency. So, tell us what it is. Yeah, so we're a global programmatic media partner. Ultimately, we run uh, managed service programmatic campaigns uh, for over 2,500 advertisers. But a lot of those advertisers we access through agencies, be it holding company agencies or independent agencies. And we have a small arm of our business that goes to work for the in-house marketers as well. Okay, great. And um, how big is the company? Uh, so the business is about 1,200 people. Um, we are in 30 cities around the world across 10 countries. Um, do about just over $600 million of revenue. Wow. $60, $70 million of EBIT. Um, yeah, so it's, it's it's been growing really for 12 years now, nonstop. Yeah, so not a small operation. And uh, your ownership, you were were you acquired by a private equity firm or just majority owned or invested? What what's the situation? Yeah, so we 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 actually had a story. We never took any funding to start with. MIQ, just me and my business partner Lee Puri, uh, sort of self funded the business, and we grew it to a few hundred million just like that. Um, and then we decided to partner with private equity initially in 2017. Uh, where we did a partnership with a company called ECI. Right. And then we swapped out ECI for another private equity partner in uh, September of last year, a company called Bridgepoint. Um, and that's our sort of goal is really to remain independent, you know, as a founder and management-led business, but keep having different private equity partners for different stages of the journey. Right. Um, so these interviews can be a little bit difficult with a company like yours because ultimately the product that you're offering is just results, right? <laughs> so, uh, but I, I think for this audience, we really want to break it down and understand like who the customers are, what sort of results they're looking for, how you get it for them, and where you've invested from a product and technology perspective. Um, so uh, I don't know how we want to break it out. Maybe we should start with like the customer types and how they use you. Yeah, so generally speaking, like we work across every single advertiser vertical you can think of, and we are a sort of full suite of sort of programmatic solutions. So we might be running location-based programmatic campaigns to really hardcore performance-based campaigns to really engaging creative branding campaigns. A big area of our business now is advanced TV, be it YouTube or CTV. Uh, digital out of home, you know. We, so we, we've con we've we've had a very diverse strategy to how we have built the business. So we're multi geos, so thirty cities across the world, multi client type, like all these advertisers from all these verticals. But we have a go to market proposition for whole codes, for indies, for in houses, and then we do all forms of programmatic execution. And we sort of take that approach to deliver that. We took the approach to have a very agnostic viewpoint of supply. So we never want to own the technology used to buy ads. We never want to okay. own the data asset used to buy ads, and we never want to own the media in which where the ads are actually shown. We instead want to partner with you know the best tech, data, and media outlets in the ecosystem. But what we did do is about a year into MIQ is we built our own technology, a technology layer that could sit above all the supply in the marketplace that just helped us effectively glue all those different disparate suppliers together and become almost power users of them, but more differentiated users of them. And now MIQ, of our 1,200 people though, 400 are in the field of data engineering, data science, product-led organization. And our biggest office is in South India in Bangalore where those people reside. That 400, that's got to be one of the larger tech, uh, tech teams in sort of the services agency space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know anyone who's sort of a commercial business as a managed service business that has such a big um, sort of engineering and data science team if they don't sell any technology. Right? These guys just build tools for yeah. our employees to deliver great campaigns uh, to our clients. 
So fundamentally, do people use you because they can't do it themselves or because you get better results than they could if they did do it themselves? I think people use MIQ for sort of three main reasons. One is the performance. The results are very, very strong. And ultimately, that's what the end marketer wants. They want right. results. Yeah. And MIQ's had a consistent um, history of delivering great results for clients. I do think the technology layer that we've built on top of lots of platforms and data sets, et cetera, make us do very differentiated execution. So, I, so you know, we always get told, like, be it Trade Desk or be it Xander or DV360, you know, there's more functionality on an MIQ seat on any one of those platforms than there is even if the, within if those platforms traded themselves, right? Right. So there's differentiated execution as well as performance. And 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 generally I do think also people uh see MIQ's people, the combo of the tech we have and the people we have as a great place to get great service, great results. Um, at speed, um, and, and and we deliver really good insights off the back of the results we we put out. So that's why you know people have used us, and you know I always say the most proud stat I ever have of MIQ is retention. You know we have maintained even with two thousand five hundred advertisers a ninety percent retention rate of clients over twelve years, right? Um, combined with an eighty five percent retention rate of talent, um, and and you know you only get that if you're doing well. 